Hey everyone, it's Whitney. Welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be refurbishing this beautiful old desk that I picked up at an estate sale. These pieces are in really good shape, but they're really dirty. They need some sanding and a little bit of love because they've been sitting in someone's barn for a real long time. All right, so let me show you what we're working with today. Here is our beautiful old farm desk. You can see it's pretty dirty. It's flaking quite a bit on top. We're gonna give a little love to these ladder back chairs. Now I'm pretty sure this is called rush seating or rush weave. Weave is still pretty tight. I think they're looking pretty good. But I just want to clean them up and then probably oil the wood just a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is just give it a nice little wipe down. I have some hot soapy water here in a microfiber rag. Woof. Yikes. Look at all that dirt coming off of there. That's crazy. So this desk is cleaning up really nicely. So while this dries, let's wipe down this chair. Now once we get down to the woven part, I'm just going to kind of lightly go with the weave. I'm just gonna wipe it down. You don't want this to get too, too wet because it can have a hard time drying and you definitely don't want to sit on this while it's wet because it can stretch out. Looky Lou, it was made in Brazil. I don't know by who or when, but it was made in Brazil. Just going in with some sandpaper. This is a 220 grit and sanding down any rough spots and there's little kind of like splotches of paint that I'm gonna to try to sand off as well. Now I'm just gonna go in with a rotary sander. This is in a 120 grit. Now, when you're buying a rotary sander and your little sanding pads, make sure you get corresponding sanding pads to the amount of holes that you have in your sander because sometimes there can be like six holes and you have an eight hole sander. So this is a Velcro pad and just line up your little piece of sandpaper with the holes, press it down and you're good to go. If your little holes are blocked, then the machine won't be able to suck up the excess uh, sawdust and then trap it in the bag. It'll just kind of like get clogged or it won't suck it up and it'll just be everywhere. So just keep that in mind. So the 120 grit wasn't really doing it for me, so I stepped it up to an 80 grit sandpaper. So I'm just gonna try to get a little bit more off and get it a little bit smoother. All right, that is super smooth, loving it. So now I'm just gonna take my 220 grit sandpaper, go in by hand, and sand down any rough areas, any splintery parts. If you are refinishing a piece of wood and you want it to look new, 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 you can go in and sand off all of the old varnish. I like that my furniture shows its age, especially because my house is an 1800s farmhouse. But if you want your pieces to be perfect, perfect, you can definitely accomplish that. So to put a little life back into this piece, I'm gonna be using some mineral oil. Now this mineral oil is food grade for cutting boards, but you don't have to use food grade mineral oil when you're working on furniture. There's a lot of different oils that you can use. You can use tongue oil, you can use linseed oil, like a boiled linseed oil mixed with a little bit of mineral spirits. There's a ton of different oils that you can use, but this is what I have on hand and this is what I'm gonna be using today. So I'm gonna put some gloves on, take a clean cloth and rub this piece down with some mineral oil to let that natural wood finish shine on through. I'm just putting some mineral oil on my rag and going with the wood grain, rubbing it right into the wood. Look at how pretty, oh my God. Who knew she was hiding under there? Now I'm just gonna rub some mineral oil all over the rest of the piece.
Welcome to day two of this project. The desk is looking really nice. And now I'm gonna be putting some shellac on the rush of the chair. Now I am not a rush chair expert. I actually just learned that these are called rush. Now there's two different types of rush. There's a natural rush, which is kind of like a reed that's twisted together, made into a rope. And then there's a fiber rush, which is like a paper, I think. Um, I think mine are fiber rush. I don't think it's natural. And for the fiber rush, you're supposed to use shellac. So let's get on it. So I went ahead and put mineral oil on the wood on this chair. I have not done anything to this besides clean it, but this wood is looking really, really nice. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the mineral oiled wood and the non-mineral oiled wood. I'm gonna go ahead and shellac the rush on the one that I already have the oil on. Then I'm gonna have to go back in and oil this and shellac this one. But just so you guys can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. The shellac I'm using is this Zinzer Bullseye Shellac in clear. This is just like a paintable shellac. One of the videos I saw on YouTube said to start at the bottom, just brush it on. So if you have any drips, it'll kind of drip to the top. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just painting it on and when you get to the wood, you could go in and use some painter's tape, tape it off if you want, but I am just going to carefully paint it on with my little paintbrush. For the sake of science, let's pull this apart. Yeah, so this is just paper. Okay, mystery solved. This is fiber rush, so this is just paper. This is not natural rush. So it's just basically like craft paper twisted together to make a rope. The shellac on this is almost dry and it's lightened up quite a bit. Looking good. I love how this desk is looking. I just oiled and shellacked this chair. You can see where it's drying and where it's still a little bit wet. So the shellac does lighten when it dries. These are looking so good. Cannot wait to take it and put it up in its spot. 